Hello everybody. Hope everybody is well. Um, I'm recording this video first thing Monday morning, the morning after the Oscars, which is one of my favourite shows to watch and I haven't watched it yet so I'm going to catch up on that. But this video <clears throat> is called Inspiration, Original Thought and Crediting the Source. And I might change the title, but those are sort of the areas in which I'm going to dabble in conversation. By the way, you may be able to hear Porchy chewing on some kind of like hide stick thing. So <laughs> he's having a little bit of a chew and a bit noisy. But that is what it is. And I do get nervous uh, filming these videos sometimes because I film them at home and I don't want to be disturbed. So I try to do them as early as possible. Um, so, yeah, so that's just a little bit of background on, um, yeah, I just don't want to be um, disturbed. So, yeah, so, um, and it's interesting that this um, topic has come up for me as um, the Oscars happen because I'm very inspired by films and um, and I get an education about directors, performance, the actors themselves, the storylines, the history of the storylines if they're um, about real people and if you deep dive into every single movie you've ever seen there's just this wealth of information if that's what excites you and it definitely excites me I love filmmaking and um and what's really interesting is that I, I see that Oppenheimer has won everything and and it's in, it's really crazy because excuse me I watched I watched a documentary about Oppenheimer that had Christopher Nolan in it two days before I went to see Oppenheimer with my son my eldest and we went to a really late sc screening so I did fall asleep in the last scene where it's um, Killian um, doing that last bit at the end which I, I I want to watch I haven't watched yet but the documentary was a million times better than the film because it had the real guy who was so fascinating to look at, to watch, to listen to and his history, oh my goodness me. And it's, I keep Googling, trying to Google um, documentary, Oppenheimer documentary that was obviously in, um, endorsed by Christopher Nolan, but I didn't look at the credits on it either. And I can't find it to tell you, so I'm going to keep looking for. But you watch that and you just, you don't almost need to see the film. And that really is the truth of it. And, and for me, Maestro was seriously overlooked because the nominations are there, but none of the wins. And Bradley, wow, the film itself, beautiful. Um, proper old school storytelling performances that are just so um, real and Carrie Mulligan oh my goodness and and that's what um, and Carrie um, really instigated the the part of this conversation about revealing the source or crediting the source both when I heard her being interviewed about her performance in Saltburn or Saltburn as a film as a whole, and people wanted to talk about um, the actress that she was doing the scenes with rather than her performance and how brilliant the other actress was. But for me, Carrie makes those scenes because she she doesn't need to speak in order to be seen and I mean I love her the way she delivers any line in any film I could cry at how wonderful this actress is and I don't know why we're sitting actors down and wanting to talk, or any creative, and want to talk about other people. Can we not just stick to them themselves and their process and what they brought and how amazing they are? Why do, wait, talk about, 
Talk about the performances of them rather than the person. You know, I had it for years. Everybody wants to credit everybody else for the duos that I've been in, but I've been in them too. And nobody wants to talk about my experience within that duo. They want to talk about the genius or the brilliance or the funny or the clever of the other person and not you and what you brought. And it's kind of boring. It limits the conversation because of course you've got to agree. What else are you going to do? And ask the actor themselves about them and their reasoning and their um, understanding and, and therefore celebrating the source of the performance and let them talk about the people that they're playing. So we get an education about that and how they came to it. I, I would love to, I did, I used to interview artists when I was part of TV shows and it's something that I always enjoyed and now I do it privately because I meet people all the time that are creatives and I can just talk to them and they're not interviews they're conversations but I'm just I have a thirst for knowledge about process and because I have an understanding of it as well because I have performed myself and um, I'm very much an improvisation person I like improv and, um, you know, I used to tell myself that I couldn't perform other people's words on paper. But if I write the words myself, I probably will do. Gosh, my story is all over the place this morning. Forgive me. Um, yeah, so just going back to, for example, like I, everybody remembers my commercials, which is wonderful because they were really a brilliant award winning commercials. I didn't get an award for them, by the way, but the music did, uh, director did, I think, lighting, but, you know, cinematography, because they were just perfection. The first one for me is the best one, which wasn't the ice cream one. Everybody thinks it is or as logged it as such but it was a black and white one that was promoting a new Boddington's beer called Boddington's Gold and it was it was a black and white shot in Miami no shot in Miami it wasn't shot in Miami at all it was shot in LA in Malibu sorry in in a location house there and all the beauty shots and things I found you know I was nervous I was really nervous it was a big massive production and um, I hadn't performed or, or spoken to camera and been directed to do so ever before. And I, I see, I hear my line and it's so authentic and fun and energetic. And, and, and that's because the director was really good with me. Um, and I'm going to forget all names, which is terrible because this is about um, crediting the source. But I was a source as well of that performance. So to direct and to perform and to be the cinematographer and to um, shoot, 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 shoot and find a story is something that really excites me. And at the moment, what I'm creating um, all sorts of things in my head, ready to actually film them. And so my inspirations, if we get back to inspirations, have been writers, artists, and filmmakers. But I also, and when I say artists, I'm covering musicians, I'm covering uh, architects, I'm covering landscapers, garden landscapers, um, because everything, if we want, I want, I like everything to be, I like design and I like smooth lines and functional spaces. Um, and so I read a lot about those types of people that do those things because I understand it already. It's not I'm reading the book and learning everything that they know. I already have an understanding myself. And um, I guess that's where original thought is the key um, because it, original thought comes from how you feel and how you see things. And then you'll find that you have like-minded. I mean, the, the most extraordinary happenings are things like I've been philosophizing my whole life and I didn't realize that I was a, philosoph a philosophy person, a philosophizer. 
until it was interesting. I was interviewed for a men's magazine years and years and years ago, and I was talking about something. I was he must have asked me about life and how I, how I felt, what it was about, and I responded with something that he said, "Oh, you sound like Jean Paul Sartre." And I hadn't heard of Sartre at that time. And I said, who's that? And, and he sort of laughed. And it was almost like, oh, she doesn't know who John Paul Sartre is. Like, bless her. But the fact is, I was thinking like a philosopher. But I got sort of semi-ridiculed because I didn't know who that philosopher was. But I, it was my philosophy. I just said it. And so I did read a bit about Sartre afterwards, obviously, to, to find out what he meant by it. But the point is, all, as well, my ideas evolve and um, ideas should evolve. Um, they, they don't, you don't have, um, you know, people talk about light bulb moments. You can have those every single minute of every day if you keep your mind open to your own beliefs and own feelings, because it is a bit of a, you are an ecosystem of ideas and feeling and how you'd like to demonstrate that, but you've got to tune in. You can't look at everybody else. And although I think it's wonderful to look at the clothes on the cat, um, not catwalk, on the red carpet and the beauty. I mean, I love looking at all the old actresses and what gorgeous gowns they were wearing. But even at their most glamorous, they were still themselves and so that's it's lovely and it's beautiful but it gets very much people forget about other things um and get fixated on those things i mean um and we never stop learning i am as they call it a cinephile and i was lounging around the other day thinking because I do think a lot, which is wonderful. All the time. It's really, it, I like being in my head. I am an adventurous, imaginative person. I make myself laugh all the time or I'll make myself cry with an idea or an understanding. I'm totally in flow with my imagination, always. And I suddenly, re and not suddenly remembered, but over the years, as somebody that loves film and has constantly heard that Citizen Kane, Citizen Kane, Citizen Kane is the best film ever made. And I thought, you call yourself a cinephile, Melanie, and you haven't even watched Citizen Kane. So I did, and it was on offer as well. So I bought it. And I watched it on Saturday night. And oh my God, I understand why it's the best film ever made. There is no disputing that, actually. And you can see the influence of so many films after it. When I look back at all the films I've seen, I could pick out certain scenes and think, oh, that looks a little bit like Apocalypse Now, and oh, that looks like this. And uh, even um, Orson Welles' performance, I believe there is no Marlon Brando without somebody like Orson. And then I and what and how it happened is I decided I'd watch watch a documentary about Orson Welles first, and I started watching. I think God damn it, I need to just watch the film. So I stopped watching the documentary and watched the film, and then went back to it. And then it just had other joys and deeper joys. And then and I'll put all this on Instagram and what what documentary and what film to watch because they are out there. And. The ideas, by the way, it's as relevant today as it ever was, that film. The storyline is as relevant today, if not more so. It just is what it is. Life does not uh, evolve uh, enough, even though these artists keep telling us that we need to change things. We don't. And we can't just celebrate them just as sources of entertainment, actually beacons of... Um, they're not even beacons of hope. It's not even that. They're a call to action. <clears throat> They're a call to action. And, you know, we have films like um, that that are cautionary tales. But sometimes cautionary tales get glamorised so much that people don't see the caution. They just want the silly lifestyle that they're watching. The Wolf of Wall Street is a prime example of that, where people strive to be like him. When actually it's supposed to be a cautionary tale. 
Um, I'm just looking, I have sometimes I just have to look at the words again, original thought, crediting the source. And crediting the source is really hugely important. I, I, I just think you have to, you have to big up the somebody that helped you grow. You have to share the information of what you learned from a specific person. Don't take the ideas of as your own if they weren't. And it's fine to learn and, and have the idea triggered, but don't own it. Uh, you have to share things. So, so for example, I've been reading some philosophers, but I only ever, I, like, I, I dabbled because, uh, because of my beliefs and how I am, because of my understanding of my spiritual self as well as my intellectual self and, and, um, my understanding of me as a biology, I was, I'm always trying to look for a guru. I'm trying to look for somebody that speaks my language. And I found a few people, but um, one of the philosophers, Carl Jung, I've only even read a couple of paragraphs about him. And I think, oh gosh, I understand that. That feels like me. And so I'm diving into his autobiography, which isn't an autobiography. Apparently, he didn't want it to be put with all his other works. Um, but it was co-written by him with someone else. But he did write chunks of it. And it's just so beautiful. And I've only read two pages. And I've... Anyway, so... What will happen is, and what happens and historically has happened to me, if I've had an idea or I've said something, what somebody wants to say, oh, somebody else said that, but they won't explore it with me. And I think we just have to have these conversations. I mean, I credit a few people in my book uh, for one bit of wisdom they gave me or a book that I thought was interesting that helped me on my way. And there's, and sometimes I can learn very quickly from somebody. One day I was having a really, really bad day and um, there was an influence, uh, I say that in inverted commas because she's just this really powerhouse of a lady. And she talks to women and says, get your shit together. Be, um, be, just have a nice day. Don't let anybody fuck with your day. And, and that's her message. And it's brilliant. But I only need to hear that once. And I embody that straight away. And I want more. I want to find out more about that. Yes, do it. Now how? You know... If you're, if you're a good person, I always, always boils down to this, if you're a good person, if you're doing the best that you can and you're keeping yourself grounded and you're keeping yourself calm and even against all the atrocities that go on when you leave the house and they might be happening in your house, you can stay grounded and just swerve and slalom around things and just keep your counsel and your head and your ideas and, and just keep studying and keep creating and keep being grateful because it's about gratitude as well. It is about gratitude as well and who, who's inspired us and naming the source and thanking them. And it might be somebody you'll never get to meet, but you can still thank them. You can still hold them in high regard and say, gosh, have you seen this? I mean, like, for example, Bradley Cooper, for me, my goodness me, how that man has grown over the last however long. I don't even know how old he is. But his works really impacted me always, Bradley Cooper's, because I find him so interesting and so talented. Yet we've watched it, I believe I've watched the man grow into this powerhouse of a creator who is so grounded and humble, it's just kind of unbelievable and beautiful. And I want to see him get credit for that. And he hasn't this Oscars and it's pissed me off a little bit, if I'm honest. Because he deserves it and so does Carrie. And all the people that were on that creative team deserve recognition. The makeup on that. The atmosphere on that film. 
maestro. The technique and understanding and embodiment of someone, and a conductor is not easy <laughs> to embody. You know, my dad's a conductor and I conduct actually to music all the time in, I've got a bat on near my vinyl and I will just get into it. Technically, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just feeling the music, which is what a conductor does and also pick out where you need to enhance or you tell a story by manipulating moments. And it's, it's a masterclass in a performance, Bradley's, and so is Carrie's, and so um, are most of the players, the key players in that film, but also it's how it's shot that, that keeps it into the period that it's in. And, and so I feel like it wasn't celebrated as much as it should have been but I'm sure it will not perturb anybody because whoever worked on that knows that there is more joy to be had and to share and and not always the films that win stand the test of time and as I think is true of Citizen Kane it was a flop at the box office I believe and then just became a cult film I hope I'm right about that. I think I read that yesterday. But anyway, find out for yourself. <laughs> I can't remember everything. I'm not, that's the thing, I'm not encyclopedic either. And I've really been bad with remembering names. But um, I try to always credit other people for things. Um, but I also have to credit myself. And we have to credit ourselves for what we bring and understand it, own it, embody it, be proud of it know all the things, you know, like, you know, I'm not a journalist, but I'm journalistic. I ask questions, I'm interested in facts and people, you know, yeah, I haven't performed, I'm not an actress, but I have performed and I've done well performing. I just haven't explored it in its entirety. You know, I, we have to, we are a wealth of treasure. And unearthing it is exciting and finding the right people who can understand what's happening to you and um listen because a lot of people don't listen they have assumptions that you have to peel off all the time when you're just trying to have I want to get to the nugget of the thing and talk about the nugget and move on to the next nugget I don't want to talk about ideas about me around my thoughts, just me and my thoughts. People are always trying to catch me out as well as if I've got some kind of like, yeah, but what about this? And it's like, well, let's talk about that thing. But you said this, I change my mind all the time. It is a prerogative, it is my prerogative as a human being to evolve my ideas into something else. I don't change my core beliefs. My core beliefs are like inbuilt, from family, from understanding and from my just heart and soul and feelings. But like my ideas can evolve the more I educate myself as well as to who I am and what other options there are to think and feel. Because it's a journey, it's an adventure, it's an exploration of self and it's just so exciting. But like I saw a clip recently with, um, oh gosh, this is what I'm like, Adele, Adele. And it was the, <laughs> it was when she did that live Adele audience with, and I, th I don't, can't remember where it was. It's such a grand, it might be the, I don't know where it is, but um, her teacher is in the audience. And that, that moment that she, you know, she, the way she spoke of her teacher as being such a source of information, inspiration, kindness and nurturing. And then for her to be, that was just so authentic and just beautiful and it was like good to the core you know and that's why I like you know I talk about my grandparents talk about my parents I talk about all the people that have taught me things and there have been so many Des is another person um, some of the producers on the, on the shows that I've done have been really sort of creative but unfortunately I believe that creativity has been very much squashed and almost made into some infantile output on mainstream television like especially game shows and things it's just they've always been a bit I don't know they're churning them out and they lose energy um 
anyway, that's just another that's just another story. And I don't watch mainstream television, and I do watch. I, and, I, and I watched the BBC first series of Kin, and that production is an incredible production, again, because it gives a shit about cinematography and taking time and establishing where you are. Um, I mean, I, do, I, I don't really want to watch the second season particularly, but I just thought it was a really, you know, beautiful um, show and some really wonderful performances. But I have a thirst for imagery and feeling and emotions. And, you know, I started watching the French um, gangster, one that just dropped on Netflix. Again, I've forgotten the name of it, but it's just dropped this, this weekend. And I'm into that. And that again, it's just, yeah. So I'm just into film. I'm into I'm into film. I'm into any kind of filming, and however it's dressed, whether it's a documentary series or a documentary or a, or a or a film or a TV show or whatever, as long as it's fueling, um, well, as long as it's teaching me something and it's fueling my imagination and it's delighting my eyes, and everybody's different. And I, I'm not, you know, I, I don't want to ever get sort of a bit sniffy because people get very sniffy around films and, and a bit snobbish around films. And I was, I'm a BAFTA member, so I saw that they'd done The Colour Purple again. And, um, and I just thought, oh, what have they done that for? It was, it's, it's perfect. It's genius. It's a classic. It's an important film. Why have they done that? And then I said to myself, no, you've got to just watch it. And it and it was it's just as important. It's just told in a different way. And Whoopi Goldberg endorses it clearly because she's in the first scene, I think. And and I don't want to ever get like, well, what are they doing? I want to read it and make a decision. I've never listened to I go to the cinema without reading uh by um the biog on it, the the synopsis. I'll just go and watch it and let me uh, let it absorb into me without any preconceived uh, conceived ideas about it or even even storyline so I don't read critics and make a decision I might read a critic and just think well it's just one person's opinion it's not mine and and I like to go to the cinema alone I went to see Dunkirk alone and I wanted to get up at the end of that film and applaud the screen but I was on my own it was one of them small screens and it's just like not done God, I wanted to. And, um, you know, the movie experience, I, I, I talk about, like, I remember going to see Rocky, and I'm sure it was Rocky 1. I can't remember if it was Rocky 1 or 2, and I can't remember, but we were in the cinema going, Rocky, Rocky. It was like being in an actual boxing match. And, fuck, it was fun. It was so much fun and it, I laugh a lot and I get really giddy and I went to see Bob Marley one and I'm, I sang and I laughed and I danced in my seat, but I was alone. But I had other people who were enjoying it as well. And so cinema going has, is, is where it's at. It's where it's at. Literally, I'm going to stop now, actually. Um, so inspiration, original thought, and crediting the source. I'm going to just get the conversation going with that. What do you like? How do you feel? Do you explore? Do you look, listen to critics? Do you just make your own mind up? Um, do critics put you off things? Why do they if you don't really know them? You know, Just open up a conversation about our own inclination, our own wisdom, the things that get us going. I could talk about film all day, every day is the truth of it. I get, I, I watch something and want to talk to filmmakers about what I've just seen and how it can be, how it's done. And well, I understand how it's done, but like, I want to be shot floor. Right, I'm going. Um, have a wonderful rest of the week. I'll see you next Saturday. And um, yeah, have fun. Explore your, um, yourselves. Explore yourself. Take it easy. See you later. Bye.